Thanks for joining us today. You've tuned into Business Daily, and I'm Ijeon in Seoul. We have plenty on our plate today, so let's get started by taking a look at the day's highlights. Its CEO resigned, and billions of dollars have been wiped off from the company's stock value. Volkswagen is in hot water, with the scandal looking to have much larger implications. We take an in-depth look at VW in trouble. It's becoming harder for Korean fishermen to catch anchovies this year as supply plunges due to unfavorable water conditions. Korean consumers are growing more optimistic, rebounding from the fallout of the recent MERS outbreak. The Bank of Korea says its consumer sentiment index came to 103 in September, one point higher than the previous month and marking the third straight month of improvement. A reading above 100 indicates that optimists outnumber pessimists about economic conditions in the coming month. The index tumbled below the benchmark 100 to 99 in June, when fears about the MERS outbreak were at their peak. Economists forecast that the Bank of Korea will downward adjust its inflation target for next year by half a percentage point. According to Bloomberg, the new inflation ban from 10 financial institutions polled this week is thought to stand at an average 2.5 percent, with the lowest estimate starting at 1 percent and the highest reaching 4 percent. The BOK's current inflation target ban is 2.5 to 3.5 percent. Consumer price gains so far this year have remained below the 1% mark despite four rate cuts since August last year that lowered the benchmark interest rate to a record low. The BOK in its most recent projection said it expects consumer prices to rise 1.8% next year. Meanwhile, U.S. Fed Reserve Chair Janet Yellen says she expects a rate hike to happen before the end of this year. In a public speech delivered on Thursday local time, Yellen said inflation will gradually move up to the Fed's target of 2 percent once oil prices rise and the dollar weakens. This was Yellen's first speech since the Fed voted last week to keep interest rates at a record low of near zero. She added that current global economic risks will not affect the central bank's plans to raise its key interest rate by December. Yellen also said the central bank would need to tighten its policy in a timely fashion at a gradual pace. A massive revelation this week. Volkswagen admits to installing software in its diesel vehicles designed to cheat on emissions tests. The repercussions are still unraveling as we speak, but is this just the tip of the iceberg? We have our Eunice Kim taking a closer look at the story. Hello, Eunice. Hi, Jiyun. Yeah, Volkswagen will hold a full board meeting on this Friday, where as of last week, they were set to rubber stamp CEO Martin Winterkorn's new contract. But what a week can do, yes. right? Winterkorn has since resigned, and now the board is said to be ready to announce a new executive who will be tasked with cleaning up this mess. But will Volkswagen be able to bounce back? And what does this mean for the future of diesel cars? It was a mess much bigger than what Germany's largest company could handle on its own. With one in five jobs coming from the auto industry, some wondered what impact the Volkswagen scandal would have on Europe's largest economy. Germany's chief reacted swiftly, stepping up to promise a thorough investigation. This is the only way to achieve transparency. All necessary measures have been set in motion, in my view, as far as I can see today. On the streets, the disappointment was real and raw. I am appalled that such a thing is possible in the first place. I'm really embarrassed right now to drive a Volkswagen diesel, and I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to even drive one kilometer with it. I am disgusted, also because they have a role model function. Not just for ecological reasons, but also for moral reasons, I have a guilty conscience as someone who drives a diesel. 
Prodded by U.S. environmental regulators, Volkswagen this week publicly admitted to programming some 11 million of its cars to shut off a system that traps nitrogen oxides, releasing at most 40 times more of the pollutants when on the road than when it's tested in labs. Volkswagen's reputation of pushing out clean diesel cars was flipped upside down overnight, an image it had poured $77 million into for TV ads in the U.S. this year alone to expand market share. With class action lawsuits being drafted and world governments launching their own retests of the VW vehicles, Germany's transport minister on Thursday announced random tests would be conducted on other car makers, as he confirmed Volkswagens in Europe were found to have the defeat device algorithm. You know, so we're just seeing the start of a long battle here for Volkswagen, I guess, and people are even wondering, is there such thing called clean diesel. Right. Is there such a thing? And also, how prevalent are these dirty mm. tactics uh, in the auto industry at large? Certainly a lot of questions left to be answered. And time will only tell, but we do hear that more heads will roll before the week comes to an end. Germany's Bild newspaper saying Volkswagen's supervisory board will dismiss more of its top brass when it meets Friday. Among them, U.S. Chief Executive Michael Horn and the heads of research and development at Audi and Porsche. All right. And while this discrepancy was discovered in California, a U.S. state with strictest environmental standards, yeah, I hear the real damage could be in Europe. In Europe, yeah. We know the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has ordered uh, Volkswagen to issue recalls on less than half a million vehicles, mm -hmm. leaving the question, then where is the other 10.5 million vehicles? Mm -hmm. Now, the world's largest automaker by sales was going after the U.S. market, but it only accounts for 6% of VW's, VW's unit sales compared to the 40% in uh, Europe and Russia. And that's because diesel vehicles are very popular in Europe, accounting for more than half of the cars on the road. And another place where it's become hugely popular in recent years is Korea. Taking a look at imports, nearly 68% of cars coming into Korea are diesel engines. With gasoline vehicles, get this, only making up 28%. Wow. And industry data show in terms of cars on the road, the first half of this year did mark a milestone as diesel cars accounted for 52% of newly registered cars, jumping 18% and reaching an all-time high. Well, but then we'll have to see whether this trend will continue. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back uh, to Korea, Korea was one of the first countries to announce that it'll run an investigation of its own Absolutely. on Volkswagen. Are we expected to see a recall ordered here as well? Well, this is the frustrating point, ji -yoon. The answer we're getting from government officials so far is not likely. Mm. And this is why. Interestingly, this connects back to the Korea-EU free trade agreement and in the trade pact, there is a clause that says Korea will comply with European emission standards for diesel vehicles, standards that aren't set to roll in until September of 2017. The Korean government could technically call a voluntary recall, but it does risk opening up the door to European uh, governments then turning right back around mm -hmm. and opening probes on Korean automakers, right. something that the government is not willing to risk at All this right. point. Well, at least we'll keep an eye on the investigation once they start it here in Korea, though. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much for coming in today, Eunice. You bet. Meanwhile, the Korean government has announced that it will start its retest on Volkswagen's diesel cars from October 1st to check if vehicles sold here in Korea were also manipulated. The global scandal is expected to hit the Korean market not only for German brands, but others as well. Our Lee Jo-young has more. German car makers have enjoyed ample success in Korea over the past decade, with their previously unrivaled reputation of having clean diesel engines. German brands Volkswagen and Audi, Mercedes-Benz and BMW held the top three spots in the imported car market, grabbing a roughly 70 percent share from January to August this year. But experts say in light of Volkswagen's emissions-fixing scandal, German car makers may face increasing challenges in the market. 
There have already been a number of high-profile incidents including BMW Korea's massive recall of over 55,000 cars due to faulty parts, and this viral video of a man clobbering his own Mercedes-Benz car in protest of the company's poor after-sales service. This all combined may put a dent in consumer trust in the three leading brands. Due to the Volkswagen scandal, I think the market share of import cars may fall. On the other hand, you have Hyundai and Kia Motors expanding their diesel lines, so their market share will probably go up. This belief was also shared among stockholders in Korea. On the back of Volkswagen's widening scandal, Hyundai and Kia saw their shares jump by more than 3 percent on Tuesday. And experts predict doubts about German carmakers may hurt consumer sentiment about foreign brands as a whole and slam the brakes on a market that has been enjoying growth at breakneck speed over the past few years. Yi Ju Young, Business Daily. And now on to the latest in the heated duty-free battle among conglomerates. Korea Customs Service will receive bids for operational licenses of four duty-free shops in Korea by Friday, with current permits set to expire by year-end. Along with retail giant Lotte Group, which will try to defend two of its duty-free stores in downtown Seoul, SK Networks, a trading and hotel unit under conglomerate SK Group, will also fight for its current operation in the capital. Shinsega Duty Free will likely try to secure its Busan Duty Free business, but also extends bids for three stores in Seoul. Conglomerates have been zeroing in on the duty free industry in recent years because of double digit annual sales growth. Now, the winners will be announced sometime in November. Ahead of the Chuseok holiday or Korea's Thanksgiving, banknotes worth nearly 4 billion U.S. dollars have been issued. According to the Bank of Korea, a net $3.95 billion were taken out over the last 10 days, up 3.8 percent from the same time last year. If the amount of money released on this Friday corresponds with or exceeds estimates, the total amount issued will mark a new record high. The central bank attributes the rise in money supply to the payday of companies overlapping with the Chuseok holiday, as well as the recent recovery in consumption. The government will boost efforts to prevent avian influenza from spreading nationwide during the Chuseok holiday as millions of Koreans are set to hit the road. Working together with other government agencies, the Agriculture Ministry will run an emergency situation room from Saturday and place quarantine teams on 24-hour standby. Staff will also be stationed at checkpoints to decontaminate vehicles that travel near affected areas. Bird flu was detected at duck farms in the country's southwestern Cheollanamdo province last week, the first case in three months. More than 10,000 ducks have already been culled as a preventive measure. A popular option for gift sets during Korean holiday is dried anchovies. The small fish caught around the southern coast account for 60 percent of the nation's supply. But a decrease in this year's catch and prices are stirring up trouble for fishermen in the region. Our Park se has the details. These boats, normally out at sea at this time of the year, are tied up at the port instead. Fishermen use these boats to process and transport anchovies, but the catch has been low this year. Anchovy season usually lasts from July to March, but this year, supply has declined 20 percent from the same period last year. The shortfall has to do with the overly high water temperatures, which hover way above the 21 degrees Celsius mark preferred by the little fish. A series of typhoons and red tide have also deterred anchovies from swimming to the southern coast of Korea. We haven't been able to catch any anchovies. We all come back after trying for a while. It's not enough to make a living. Prices usually rise when supply dwindles, but for anchovies, they've actually dropped roughly 30 percent due to the domestic slump in the economy. 
Anchovies used to sell well as holiday gifts, and the price was good too. This year, the price has dropped and demand is low as well. Fishermen are hoping that the government will draw up countermeasures like special support funds, but without seeing any clear commitments so far, their worries continue to mount. Park Se-young, Business Daily. And that does it for today and this week. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next week with more, so make sure to tune in then. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend, everyone.